species in selected protected areas in South Africa. Oh my goodness, look at this amazing, amazing, amazing elephant, eh? Okay, let's go for it. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Isma, and I'm doing research on the edge effect and its impacts on the abundance of mammal species in protected areas in South Africa. Um, so, just a brief: South Africa most pr protected areas in South Africa are mostly grass and bush veld types of ecosystems, and less research is being carried out on the edge effect in these type of ecosystems. Yet, the edge effect in this type of ecosystem has very significant consequences on the survival of mammal species in these protected areas. So my research and more research that should be carried out in this area will help to inform conservationists on how to plan for the future of conservation areas in terms of creating wildlife corridors or matching different uh, protected areas to make bigger protected areas. So, um, so when I, I was carrying out the research, I had two questions in mind or two objectives. And the first one was to examine the types of edge effect and then assess the extent at which they affect the protected area. And I had uh, things like the shape of the protected area in mind. So like comparing the smaller, do, um, the, does the shape of the protected area affect how much of its area is going to be affected by the activities around it. And also I looked at the size of the protected area and asked the questions like, does the size of the protected area affect how much of the area of that protected area is going to be affected? And I also looked at the urbanization like cities and towns, how much do they contribute to the um, uh, destruction of the ecosystems of the protected area? So we carried out research on 40 protected areas as seen on the map. And the protected areas in orange, they are those in uh, rural areas or remote areas. Uh, as we can see, uh, Kalagadi and, uh, and, and, and Kruger, they stand out. And then the protected areas in green are those that are found in places surrounded by suburbs, villages, and towns. So our second objective was to see after studying about this uh, effect, do they have any impact on the abundance of mammal species in terms of distribution around the protected area? So that's like our second section, as we shall see. And the quick one on the methodologies I used, um, the first method was Patron formula, and it was, it was very, very important because it enabled me to know which part of the park should, can you classify as the edge habitant and which part can you classify as the core habitant. And in 1975, Paton uh, discovered that actually the shape of the park uh, affects how much of area of that park is going to be, uh, uh, is going to be affected by the edge effect. So with using that, you can determine and say that maybe this amount of area of the park is very prone to edge effects. And our second method is the using of geographical information system software, OKGIS. And this was very, very important to help us to quantify the area of different parks and area of different activities carried out by man. So OKGIS uh, primary role was to help us determine the magnitude of edge effect and also to help us locate the cameras to their right place using the GPS coordinates you obtained from Snapshot Safari. And lastly, I want to talk about the data analysis tools I used, and that was RS Studio and Microsoft Excel, in particular, uh, the pivot tables and the data analysis tool. So our data sources involved the camera traps, of course, from Zuniverse project uh, through their subsection of Snapshot Safari South Africa. And these were are very important to help us determine the differences in the abundance of mammal species in the core and the edge habitant. And the second type of data we used is South African National Land Cover. And this helped us to, um, to, to know how much of the area around the protected area has been transformed by human beings, given the fact that much of the edge effects in South Africa is human-induced. 
and then we quant we, the quantity of how much has been transformed, we called it the level of transformation, and we abbreviated it as LOT. So some of the interesting observation we found after analyzing our data is a most age effect in South Africa is caused by human activities. So our data confirmed our expectation. And um, how we confirm this by, if you look on the right, there is parallel and, uh, nature reserve and uh, we drew a two kilometer buffer around it between the white and the black line that is the surrounding of the park and within the white line that is the area of the park then we quantified all the activities you can see in brown purple yellow uh, there are different activities carried out by human beings and we quantified them and found out how much they affect the pie chart on the left shows how much of uh, these land transforming activities affect the parks in total. And though mining was very common around almost every park, it was in around 38 of the 40 parks, we found that cultivation actually does a lot of land transformation than mining. And as we had expected area, followed by forested area, and then the built environment involving villages, towns, and everything. So our second observation was the shape of the park actually plays a very important role in determining the magnitude of age effect that park is going to experience. Mandiklazi Nature Reserve on the right is almost a circle and uh, uh, our research showed that it receives only 20% of the destruction. So 20% of the park is prone to destruction as compared to uh, growth bush nature reserve where 140 percent of the park is prone to destruction and now what we see is that um, almost every area in this gross nature reserve is can be uh, uh, is prone to disturbances from the edge effects that are surrounding it and the our observation was that actually urbanized areas they tend to express greater magnitude of age effect than rural areas for obvious reasons, because urbanized areas, they have a lot of land transformation around them in comparison to rural areas. And we confirmed this using the wilkinson lang test and ARA, uh, which showed that uh, actually our, our uh, correlation is, is positive. So there was a very strong correlation between uh, the two. So the fourth and our last observation in the first section is that there was a very strong correlation uh, between the size of the protected area and the amount of land that has been, uh, sorry, and, um, and, and, uh, and the percentage of like pattern diversity index. So what this one shows is that smaller areas we are found to be um, having shapes that are close to circles and they, the bigger the protected area became, the more um, the, the more zigzag form in the east shape we, we observed. And this kind of explains why these small protected areas are able to somehow um, uh, conserve wildlife despite, despite their size because they take on very round shapes and less of their area is prone to uh, the edge effect. And we confirmed this using Spearman ranks uh, correlation, which showed us a very um, strong correlation of uh, raw equals to 0 0.405, uh, which is uh, uh, somehow somewhat close to one. So this brings us to our section two, where we used QGIS to determine the edge effect in the core and, uh, and, and the edge habitant. And, uh, this involved the use of data from a South African land cover. And uh, uh, as we can see, plains back from the left, then mountain zebra and Madikwe. So the, as I mentioned earlier, the area in the white is the, is the, is the, is the, is the like the core of the park. And the area between the white mark and the black mark is what we, we call the edge area. And it's the one which is most prone to uh, edge effect. And this one changes according to the size of the park. And then the, the white dots you see are camera positions as provided from Snapshot Safari. So the method we used to find the abundance of mammal species is the 
relative abundance indices. And this method was described by Jenks in their research they carried out in uh, Thailand in 2011. And how this method works is that um, we, we get all the photos captured by all the cameras and we convert them into counts. And now if a photo has ve very many animals, we take them as one species count. And then uh, we divide that, those counts with the number of days that the camera trap ran to get the relative abundance index. And uh, Janks found out that actually the relative abundance index are related to the actual abundance of mammal species. So if you find the relative abundance indices, you're close to finding the actual abundances. So uh, we, we use that uh, to determine how our mammals are distributed. And what we found out is that um, the results were not as we expected because out of the three packs we, uh, we studied, two of them had the core areas with more species abundances than Sorry, two of them had core areas with, with less species abundances than age, which was against what we expected. Like if you look at uh, mountain zebra and Madikwe, their core habitants had more species than, sorry, their age habitant had more species than actually the core. It was only Plainsburg which matched to our expectation where the core had more species than the age. And um, uh, we confirmed this uh, running through ARA, uh, program and uh, and we used the Wilkinson rank test to uh, carry out uh, to see if the differences between the abundance of species in the core and the edge are statistically different. And what we found out that um, for all the results uh, we saw, this the the differences between the core and habitant relative abundances were not statistically different. And this means that they may have occurred as a result of chance. And or maybe it was due to the small sample size we used because Zuniva's camera traps, um, like we found that few of them can match to our expectation, given that they were set up randomly around the protected areas. Like for example, in Madikwe, as Christian observed in his research, like uh, the cameras are not randomly distributed, but they, are, they follow a certain pattern. So what you found, like most cameras fall within the core than in the edge. And this uh, led us to eliminate some cameras and create an, uh, equal cameras between the core and the edge. And this reduced our sample. And this may have been the reason why our results were not um, significant statistically. And um, lastly, we observed that um, also due to, the, due to the behavior of these large herbivores, which are found in these protected areas, we find that uh, herbivores that live in a group such as buffaloes and zebras, they may not follow, um, their distribution is not affected by edge effect because they have high tolerance to poor forage and their distribution is much affected by water presence and uh, predation. But it's smaller animals, uh, smaller mammals, which can be like less than 10 kilograms, they face this edge effect. And a slight change in the vegetation type as a result of invasive species can cause, can affect their distribution within the core and the edge habitant. And our recommendation is that in future, as this research is being carried out, it will be important for someone to focus even on smaller mammals rather than only big mammals. Because as we observed, our camera traps mostly captured big mammals since they were set to capture big mammals. So uh, that's uh, what we observed. And uh, I'd like to uh, uh, carry out like thanks, special thanks to uh, Mark. Uh, he has been so helpful and I disturbed him a lot on a lot of things to make my research better. And um, a special shout out to Lane and Aventa uh, for uh, bearing with me when I disturbed them about uh, the uh, disturbances in the data that I was, was coming from Zuniverse. Yeah, so roughly that's what uh, uh, 